Hey, I'm Kenneth Weidstam, a professional photographer here in Colorado. Welcome to another one of my weekly camera talks about cameras I actually use. This is a mighty beast of a camera. It really is. It's a 330, C330S. They made these in three versions, the original, the professional F, and then the professional S. If you're looking for one, get the S if you can. It's the latest model that they made. And I've used the older ones. And to me, here's the difference. They built this viewfinder and this waist level finder with sides so tight that it lets no light in. And it really works great for a mask as opposed to four wings that spring up, but they're not really light tight on the corners. This is light tight on the corners. This has a 55 millimeter F 4.5. This is like my low budget Rolleiflex wide that I can't afford. But this was at a sale at a flea market in New Jersey called the Golden Nugget. I hope it's still there after all this COVID stuff. And this camera was on the table of a professional photographer from New York who came down to sell some gear. And I only paid a couple hundred, maybe 250 for it. And it has a little deal where the back doesn't line up exactly perfect when it closes. Who cares? These are cameras to be used. I did a photo walk with a friend and we took different cameras out and I took this one out and I loved using this camera. The viewfinder is bright. The ground glass is bright. The C330 and the 220 have an actual bellows system. So you're actually getting the ability to focus much closer than you can with a uh, Rolleiflex, which has a minimum focus of say a meter. But this one, you can focus closer than a meter, but then you're going to have parallax problems where, you know, if you're focused on a flower here, well, you're actually seeing it here, but you're only going to shoot the bottom of it here because the lens is in a different position than what you're seeing in the viewfinder. All TLRs work with a mirror right here at a diagonal. The light comes in the top lens and goes up through the viewfinder and you see it on the ground glass. But the lens sees the, the bottom lens is what projects the lens and the light to the film, which is right here. And so you have one lens that sends light to the film and one lens that sends light up to the viewfinder. That's how all TLRs work. I would say that this is, well, I think probably the 220S would also be my favorite because the 220S is a little bit lighter. The difference between the 330s and the 220s in my experience is when you wind and advance the film on a 330, it has a little lever that resets the shutter. On a 220, you have to push a little lever down and cock the shutter yourself, which I don't mind doing. But I don't like the C220 in that that viewfinder doesn't have all this baffling around the edges and it makes it so that those four wings don't block out the light on the viewfinder on the ground glass as well as this one does. And I do think for me, there's a difference between shooting with both eyes open on a ground glass than there is with one eye on a tunnel. And I don't think it's comparable to shooting with an electronic screen as much as it is with a actual ground glass, but this is a workhorse. I'm sure there are millions of photos in photo albums shot on this camera at weddings in the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, probably even still today. This is the camera that you put a big handle flash on. This was the camera you would use to shoot weddings. It's got incredibly quality lenses. It usually comes with an 82.8, so it's rather fast. They're not expensive, they're a few hundred dollars. And if you find them with some wide angle lenses, that's another bonus. You can always pick up the 80. Whether you get a blue dot 80 or a regular 80, they're all good. I don't even worry about things like that. I look at what's a good deal. If I find a good deal on an 80, I put it on there. This has lenses that come off. Unlike the Rolleiflex, you could take these lenses off, switch them out for a different lens. 
And a friend of mine uses his with a long telephoto lens, like a 180. I'm a wide angle guy, so I like the 55 on this. The 80 is a nice portrait lens. It's very similar to a Rolleiflex. So if I'm going to shoot with the 80, I'll probably take the Rolleiflex. This is heavier than the Rolleiflex. But so what? It's that build quality and the bellows and the ability to do more that allows it to be a little bit bigger, but it's not ridiculously heavy and it's certainly, it feels solid. And if you, I think that it's the kind of thing where I like cameras that have a little heft to them. I like cameras that feel like they're solid and they're not going to be flimsy. Frankly, a Yashica Mat 124G feels a little bit flimsy compared to this. This feels like a solid chunk of metal assembled well and everything's tight. This is a camera that I've used and I can't say anything but good things about it in use and about its results. I have uh, photos from a photo walk. I think they're still online. I'll put a link to them down below if they are. And you can see the ones that are squared from that photo walk came from this. And I think that it's one of those cameras that different than a Rolleiflex because a Rolleiflex is so much that small little package with that one lens that doesn't come off. This is a system camera. You can change out the lenses. You can do macro work because of the bellows. You can focus much closer. They have a little paramender, it's called. And it's this little device that goes on your tripod. And literally, at the moment of exposure, if you're focused on the flower, you push this little lever and it winds the camera up so that this lens is in the position that this lens was in. And now you're getting the same view without that parallax error. But for most of the things that I shoot, I'm a documentary people guy, this works fine. I don't need to even deal with that. And it's got a little needle in the viewfinder that tells you Hey, watch out for the headroom if you start focusing too close. It's got a little bit of a warning system. But for not very much money compared to what people throw at digital these days, great, great buy. I highly recommend it. I love it. I was looking for a 220S at the time that this showed up. And I was like, well, the 220Ss are quite expensive online, maybe five, $600. And for a couple hundred dollars and a 55, this was a good bargain. So I ended up with the 330S. But whatever model you're looking at, look for at least the F, which was the second version as far as I know. And then the S is the last version. They probably have the least amount of wear and are the, the newest of all the Mamias that you can buy. All right, that's today's photography talk. If you're enjoying these, hit the subscribe button. I'll be back next week. We'll talk about another camera that I've put through its paces. If you could support, hit the Patreon and uh, wish you, as always, here's to good light.